if I'm fixing it, I'm filming it. Well, hello everyone. Today, we're going to install this. A nice LED light bar on a friend's quad. Now, this will apply to anything you want to install. And we're going to properly install it because we're going to be using a relay. So basically what that relay does is power directly from the battery will go to this and then through a switch we'll turn the switch on and it'll send the power to that. So power right from the battery is physically going to that. That doesn't require a lot of power but some light bars do so you want to go directly off the battery but in order to do that you need a relay and of course we need some fuses now some people say one fuse is good enough from the battery to this and then 12 volt source to your switch I always put fuse a protector on any positive voltage because some could go haywire with your switch you still want to be able to have that fused. So I put two fuses. And of course you're going to need some wires and uh, I solder all of mine. You don't have to, but I do. And then this is what we're going to go by. Quite simple. This is for most Bosch Gila relays. And you can see how from your 12 volt positive, a fuse going to number 30 and that kind of connects to 87A, 87B. These are your lights. But power will not flow through until this switch is turned on. And this switch doesn't have to come from the battery. It can come from anything. It doesn't require a lot of juice to turn this, to open up this power. So we'll put a fuse here. The switch, 86 goes to negative. So that will be what we're going to be doing. So, why don't we go to it? What are we installing it on? The transformer. No, no, no. I got to get the covers back on. This is an unrelated video. If you want to check it out, I'll put a link in the description. But uh, we're going to get all the covers back on. And then we're going to install this light bar on this uh, Kawasaki 750 Brute Force 07. So, Let's get going. Yeah, I got the LED light bar already attached to the frame. I had to kind of weld a couple braces there. And here's the wires. And I was going to go underneath here. The radiator is all there. So I'm going to have no choice but to come up here. And I drilled a hole here. And I'll use some of this plastic loom to cover it. And I'll put it underneath the bar here, and I just can't go underneath. The radiator's all here, and I'm worried it'll get too hot and melt something, so we'll go up above. Put power to this from the relay, and this, this goes to ground. Um, as you can see, I already have a wire right here, and that will get attached directly to the battery. And this goes to one side of the relay, and the other end of it is right here. That will go to the a fuse first, then to the relay. So let's get on with that. I like to solder all my connections. A lot better than mechanical connection. The chemical connection is the best. That's what NASA uses. And of course we're going to be using some heat shrink tubing. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty lucky I could buy it by the three foot. I think we're going to use this side. Now I do Crimp it just so it can hold it, but I go and solder everything. And see, the purpose of this is so it can go over here and then I could heat it. And then when I do plug it in, you know, it's all sealed. So that's why this one's a little bit longer. Okay, so let's wait for that to turn on.
Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. That will not come off. Oh, move this around a little bit. It's starting to heat up. Okay. So that's that's what it'll look like. So we'll heat this up. Don't keep your flame in one spot or it'll burn it. You want it to shrink it. Okay, I'm gonna go get this attached over there. Okay, I just kind of pushed them in and twist them a little bit so it doesn't get fat. Oh, that turned out nice. Okay, so this is coming from the battery. And now we'll now go to pin number 30. But before I put this on, I want to get some dielectric grease in all my connections. And coat all your connections. Both sides. Okay, next thing we're going to do is get a powered source from a keyed 12 volt. So keyed 12 volt means is there's no power until you turn the key on. And I'm going to go off of uh, the cigarette lighter here. So we have a 12 volt tester. So I'll put this end on, on ground. Put the power on. I'm just going to pinch this wire, tap into it. And there you go. You can kind of see it's red. So we know we're getting power there. Now I'll turn the key off. There you go. Power went off. So we know that's keyed power. So let's tie into that. This, uh, the keyed power. And this is going to my switch. And then from the switch, it goes to the relay. So let's get that done. Okay, 85 is right here. Okay, now why don't we get our light attached to that. Make sure I have the same amount of cable here. White wire goes to the LED light bar, so we have to put that on the relay, and that will go to number 87. So 87, 88, we got a four terminal relay. That's a five terminal relay, so it doesn't matter. 87A, 87B, you can even go off of just one if you had two lights. So we will put the power, or sorry, we'll put the power that should go directly to the LED. Now all we need is our ground. Okay, so I got this to frame ground. Now we got to connect it to uh, the ground that's needed for the light and also needed for the relay. So we're just going to tie into this because this is what's going to go to the relay. Okay, now this goes to the ground on your relay, which should be 86. 86 it is. Okay, now we're ready to connect it to the battery. Now I know LED doesn't take much so let's just put in a 15 amp and of course we want to make sure we get the right that's the main power coming from the battery so we'll put a 15 amp in there and let's get another oh we can even go a 5 amp there so we'll turn the switch on there 
Oh yeah, so that's how you properly wire in a 12 volt device using a relay. So basically this is not pulling power from your 12 volt line or anything. This is pulling power directly from the battery and that's what you want. That way you will, they always get good power. Like your winch, it's got to go directly to your battery. Just like this. So um, what I'll do, I'll get everything buttoned up and then you can see how it looks and then we'll go over this chart one more time. Maybe I was a little bit too fast. I want you guys to do a good job, safe job. So we'll go through this schematic one more time. Okay, we'll go over this nice and slow now. And again, we're working with either a five pole relay or a four pole relay. And you know, one, two, three, four, five connectors, hence five, four connectors. They're virtually the same, except the five pole has individual ones that can say go out to each light. And uh, 87 can go out to both lights, just make sure you have a heavy duty wire because you're carrying a lot of current for two accessories. But here, your accessory, going to each connection, 87A, 87B, make sure your accessories are going to ground, they always need ground. Uh, there's your 12 volt battery and that goes to a fuse and that's your higher amp fuse because basically that will get directly connected once the switch is turned on to these lights. So you want that around a 15 or a 20 amp fuse. You can even go as high as 30 amp. These relays are probably good for 40 amps. This power does not get connected until you get this switch. So this switch is off of your keyed 12 volt accessory. Any positive keyed on switch. This could be a low amp fuse because you don't need that much to turn it on so this could be like a 5 amp fuse. Just to turn this switch on to feed power from your battery to your lights. And then of course your ground and sometimes on these relays uh, 86 could be 98. So there you go. That's how you would hook up an accessory using a relay. Okay so um, good luck with your relay.